Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, the basicity of amines, and I'm going to focus on the impact of delocalized electrons. I'm just going to work through some uh, kinds of examples and show some compounds and talk about the effects. Uh, and so one of the things I want to talk about, uh, we'll start off with is cyclohexylamine. Uh, and cyclohexylamine has a pKb of oh, 3.4. 3.3. And so that means that the pKa of cyclohexyl ammonium is, uh, you know, 10.7. Aniline over here aniline over here has a pKb of 9.4. This is a big difference. Aniline is thus much less basic than uh, cyclohexylamine. And, substitu and substituted anilines are pretty similar. They vary by a pKb unit or so. All right. So what's the big difference between aniline and cyclohexylamine? Well, the big difference between aniline and cyclohexylamine is that Aniline, or the lone pair in aniline is delocalized. And so it can be shared through resonance, or it, it's shared through resonance with the rest of the ring. And there are a number of resonance structures, but I'm really only just going to highlight the, uh, highlight just one. Right? Charge and positive charge there. So, major lesson here is that delocalized lone pairs make the amine less basic. Right? So if you're looking at an amine that has delocalized lone pairs, it's significantly less basic, uh, several pKb units. And there are other effects on this as well. Uh, you know, and so other substituents, so other substituents on aniline can change the, you know, pK value. So for example, you know, paramethyl aniline over here, pKb is uh, 8 point. Mine, so it's it's a little bit more basic, and that probably isn't surprising because the the methyl group is electron donating, um, and then uh, and so it would destabilize the anion here. Um, it stabilized the cation a little bit, and then if we were to go to say to the other end of the spectrum to an electron withdrawing group like nitro, and the nitro group can, uh, you know participate in the resonance situation as well. Uh, PKB of paranitroaniline is 13. Right. Uh, the, the conjugate acid of paranitroaniline has a PKA of 1, and so it's almost a strong acid. Uh, let's talk about another class of molecules, the amidines. And I'm, I'm actually, I'm just going to use... Uh, uh, a single representative compound to, to describe what's going on here. Uh, this is the structure of diaza bicyclo 1,8 diaza bicyclo 540 7 Okay. Everybody remembers this compound. Uh, actually, this is DBU, guys, by cyclone Um And you may have encountered DBU uh, in as a base in various organic reactions. And DBU has two nitrogens in it, and they each have a lone pair. And so you can use this understanding of delocalized lone pairs are less basic to identify 
which nitrogen in amidine is more basic. And it's not the nitrogen with the delocalized lone pair. It's the nitrogen with the localized lone pair. So amidine, amidines like DBU uh, get protonated. Move my DBU up out of the way. Get protonated at the nitrogen that looks like. Let me get rid of my lone pairs. It's protonated at the nitrogen that looks like it's you know, already in a pi bond, or, you know, the nitrogen with the localized lone pairs, right? This is the one with the localized lone pair. And that's where it's basic. And it's worth noting that DBU as an amidine has a pKb equal to 0 0.5. So this is almost as strong a base as hydroxide. Uh, the pKa of its conjugate acid is 13.4, so it's, again, this is almost a strong acid. Uh, no, it's almost, it's, it's almost, you know, as, as, it's almost as acidic as water. So this is, this is almost as basic as, as hydroxide. It's a pretty strong base. And other amidines that, that are, you might see are, are similar. Um, similarly, um, okay, let's... guanidine. And then I want to talk just a little bit about this guy, guanidine. Guanidine is a, a molecule that looks like this. And if you're looking at it, you might think, oh, that made, is that a real thing? Yeah, actually, it's a real thing. And it's the, the side chain uh, It's the side at the end of the side chain on arginine. So it's not just not even naturally occurring. And well, guanidine is basic here because these are the localized lone pairs. And guanidine's conjugate acid is worth drawing because the, the sort of most important resonance structure actually looks like this. Three NH2s all with their lone pairs all you know, around a carbocation in the center. And the pKb of guanidine is 0 0.4. And, and again, is essentially, and the cation is almost the, it's one of the weakest acids that's out there that's still stronger than water. Uh, so again, really a pretty, pretty strong base here. And guanidine is recognized as one of the strongest neutrally charged bases out there. Now, now we're going to get to one of my favorite compounds, uh, proton sponge. Yeah, proton sponge is one, one eight diamino naphthalene, and uh, proton sponge picks up a proton at one of its amines, and it, and it does something really cool. Orient it that way, and actually, this hydro, this extra proton that is picked up, and sh is can be shared between the two nitrogens through hydrogen bonding. So that's pretty cool, right? And the pKb of proton sponge. is two, All right? So it's, it's not as basic, say, as guanidine or, uh, or, or DBU, but it's still pretty basic in comparison uh, to the other aniline-like compounds. So even though this is resonance stabilized, or even though these are delocalized lone pairs, the proton itself can be shared between two nitrogen. In the next video, we're going to look at uh, the
the basicity of heterocyclic amines. These are aromatic compounds where the nitrogen is in the ring. Right? Thank you for watching.